Amazon wine gadgets under $15, mostly. I got a bunch of stuff on Amazon under $15, all related to wine, and we're gonna test it all out and see what we like, what we don't like, find out if there's anything good that we can find on Amazon that's cheap. It's gonna help us with our wine experience. Do you, do you, do you, do you wanna come say hi? Rory wants to say hi before we dive in, or do you wanna open the wines? Oh yeah, I think that's a bad idea. The first item that I've got here is, it's a foil cutter. Now these two foil cutters were $6.99 for the pair, which means what? Like $3.50 each? And these are supposed to help with opening a bottle of wine by making it easier to cut the foil off. If you've used a corkscrew to open a bottle of wine before, sometimes, depending on how much experience you have, it can be a little finicky using the cutting end of the corkscrew. I'm gonna need a box cutter. Box cutter acquired and the foil cutter. Now this is very basic. You just attach it to the top of the bottle and then twist it around and it opens or cuts off the foil on the bottle. Grab ourselves a Troublemaker Red Blend from California to test it out with. Just literally put this on the top of the bottle and squeeze and then twist. I messed that up. That was super, super easy. If you're using a typical corkscrew to get this foil off the top, you gotta twist the bottle around, move the corkscrew, and then pull it off. And like I said, sometimes it can be finicky. So honestly, for three bucks, this isn't the traditional way to cut foil off, but I'd say worth it. Reach into our package of goodness again one more time. And we've got ourselves this thing called a guzzle buddy. And this handy dandy mechanical device was $12.99, 13 bucks. And I don't know if you can actually see this image at the top here, but you put this in the top of the bottle of wine and drink it. Let's see how well this bad boy works out. Now this is what it looks like. It's super simple, it's plastic, and there's a hole in the bottom there. I guess this turns a bottle of wine into technically a glass of wine. So if you're doing a one glass a day type thing, might be useful, but we'll see. I'm just gonna stick this in here. I don't know, that looked like it worked. It seems airtight, so we'll say it's gonna work out. If I spill wine everywhere, then I'm gonna have wine on me the rest of this video. And there was a glass version of one of these that was like 25 bucks, but I think this is gonna be kinda silly, so I just went with the plastic one. Let's find out. The wine tastes great. Nothing wrong with this as far as the value or the quality of the wine that you're getting out of it. It's a little difficult to use. It seems more like a gag gift rather than anything else. The wine seems to be just kind of trickling out of the bottle. I mean, it's not really chuggable. Mm. I lied. I definitely lied. If you turn the bottle upside down, it comes out pretty fast. So depending on what your goals are, maybe you want this, but I feel like this is more of a joke that you'd give to somebody for a birthday or a Christmas gift rather than something you'd actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. For 13 bucks, <laughs> I don't think it's worth it, except if you wanna give it as a gift, then it'd be kind of funny. Now the last item that we have in this Amazon pack is an aerator. And this was $13.99. Now in the last video, we talked about decanting and decanting is very similar to aerating, though they're a little bit different. An aerator works quite differently than a decanter. This one is actually looking quite substantial for $14. Looks like we've got two pieces here. This appears to be some sort of stand and this is the aerator and I assume Yep, beautiful. Actually, nice presentation. And there's quite a bit of weight to this thing as well. All we do is pour the wine through the top of this, out the bottom, into the glass, and it aerates the wine. Now in the last video, we talked about decanting, and we went into a little bit of chemistry regarding tannins, polyphenols, monomeric anthocyanins, 
We're not gonna do that right here. But we will talk about aerated wine just briefly. I assume that's a word. Wine definitely is a word. When you use an aerator, Basically what's happening is similar to decanting, but much faster. A bunch of oxygen is entering the wine over time very quickly as it goes through the aerator. And this is kind of spinning around the wine, touching all of it, allowing everything that happens in a decanter to happen much, much faster as it goes through the aerator. In order to show you, we're gonna need a glass. Actually, we're gonna use two glasses so that we can compare the aerated wine versus the wine directly from the bottle. Now, in order to use an aerator, many of them can be very different. This one is just freestanding and you pour the wine through it, so we'll hold it above the glass and then take our bottle and just pour the wine through the aerator. And you can actually hear it sounds quite squeaky. But what you're really hearing is all of that air going around the wine super, super fast like I showed you. And hopefully it allows the wine or the tannins to soften up so that everything can be a little bit more balanced. That's the goal anyways. We'll see if it works out with this aerator because some of them obviously can work better than others. And to compare it, we'll pour a regular glass of wine in this glass. We've got the aerated glass, we've got the regular glass. We're gonna compare what $14 can do for you. This is a big wine. It's very, very fruit forward. A lot of big cherry, blackberry, medium dry probably, but that's just directly from the bottle. We'll compare it to the glass that came through the aerator. Actually, Pretty impressed. Now in these two glasses, there's not a massive difference. It's the same wine, but one was aerated and one was not, obviously. Now this one over here, the aerated wine, also shows a little bit more tobacco flavor right off the bat, and that tannic drying sensation is just a tad bit more balanced. And so you do get a little benefit uh, throwing it through the aerator. That said, you're not necessarily gonna miss out on anything if you just leave it in the glass for a second. If this glass just sits for maybe two more minutes, it will probably have the same effect as if it went through the aerator. If you wanna save yourself a few extra minutes of time sitting in the glass, then that's great. You might as well grab this thing for 14 bucks. It's not bad and it does what it says it's going to do. And also, you know, the material's great. So I'd say definitely worth it. The next item that we have is that. This is roughly packaged, first off, <laughs> but it's supposed to be some sort of bottle opener that uses air to open the bottle of wine. And it was $14.95. Just barely under my $15 mark. Yep, it's a plastic device and it says do not hold right there. Don't know how you use it if you can't hold it, so we're gonna hold it anyways. Grab another bottle of wine so that we can test this thing out. And I think the way that this works is we just stick the needle in the bottom of this through the cork and then <laughs> pump oxygen into the bottle until the cork comes out. This is gonna be really, really, really fishy. Okay, we got it in there. Do I lower this? Do I not lower this? Don't think I lower this. I'm a little scared to touch it. I'm gonna just begin pumping into the bottle. Faster. Woo! It did work. It was kind of like a champagne pop. Cork came out beautifully. No problems there. The device is just fine. What was this thing, like 14 bucks, 15 bucks? It was 14.99. It worked as advertised. And I guess if you have difficulty using a corkscrew to open a bottle of wine, this would be an, an alternate option that you could try out. That being said, I don't really see a need for this. It just seems like another way to open a bottle of wine that you don't really need to have. I'm gonna say medium on this. What is a medium? That's a maybe, maybe not. Now there was one more item in this package. It was, ooh. Now I thought this was interesting when I got it. This is called a drop it. And it's supposed to allow you to drop one of whatever's in this into the wine and then it removes your headache. 
or your hangover or something like that. It was $14.99 as well. And now my main question was something like this is if it's going to A, change the taste of the wine when I drop it in the wine and B, if it's actually gonna stop the headache. And that's gonna be a challenge to test because I'm not gonna drink enough to get a headache and I also don't usually get hangovers from drinking wine, but apparently there's some people that are really sensitive to the tannins and sulfites in wine and that causes them to have a hangover. So I'm gonna check it for the taste and if it doesn't change the taste and you wanna try it out if you're someone who struggles with getting hangovers from wine, then either lower the amount of wine that you're drinking or you can try these out as well. Oh, was not paying attention. Pro tip, don't look at the camera while you're pouring the bottle of wine into the glass. Okay, we've got the same bottle from before. We've got one glass, just regular. We're gonna pour a second glass that's gonna contain the drop -its. It came with instructions. Shake lightly before each use. Squeeze slightly in upright position to clear tip. White, one to two drops. Red, two to three drops into the glass and swirl for 20 seconds. And now it said two to three drops. One, two, three. And I think we just swirl the glass around. We'll taste the no headache remover first. Tastes just like the last time. This glass has been sitting for a while, so all of that overpowering fruit that was there initially is a little bit softer now. That's not the point though. This is the point. How does it taste compared to the one that we just threw some substance that we have no idea what it is that magically removes headaches? Hopefully I don't die. It's, it actually smells weird. Not off, just different. Ooh. Yeah, you can def, you're gonna 100% without a doubt Take whatever this is, you can taste it in the glass. Food grade hydrogen peroxide, natural egg white protein and sunflower lecithin, and no artificial sweeteners. It's got some sort of faint chlorine taste, like not absurdly ridiculous, as in I'll never have the glass, but two glasses do not taste the same. I don't even know how to describe it. What does it taste like I'm drinking out of a pool? If I mixed pool water and let me let me show you. It tastes like that ratio of pool water and wine. You can definitely still taste the wine, but the pool water makes an appearance. So if you really struggle with getting headaches after drinking wine, then you can definitely still drink this even though you're gonna taste it. But if you don't struggle with getting headaches, this is a no-go for me. And that brings us to our last package of goods. In this package, we've got a corkscrew, we've got a vacuum pump with four stoppers, and we've got keeps chilled wine at the perfect drinking temperature. Wine pour with chill rod. We'll start off with the manual vacuum pump with four stoppers. It was $5, also packaged poorly. Doesn't mean it's useless though. Inside this package, we've got what looks like the pump and the four stoppers on brand. Now, I think the way this works is after you have a bottle open, you can essentially put it on the top of the bottle and pump the air out so that it lasts longer or that the flavor of the wine stays as close to when you open the bottle for as long as possible. We've got the California Zinfandel that we just opened and we've got one of the toppers but there's not a lot of oxygen in there because we didn't pour any wine out of this bottle, so let's pour some wine out. You got yourself a good night of drinking, you've poured a few glasses of wine, or many, or you brought the bottle capper that we showed off, and you poured a very large glass of wine, like that, or more. But you don't want that headache we were talking about, so you gotta package this bottle up so you can save it for later. That is what this device is for, I believe. Now keep in mind that, uh, well, let me show you. The wine that we were talking about earlier, as soon as this touches your oxygen, you're in trouble, so to speak. The moment that your wine comes into contact with oxygen, it begins to change. Changed wine. 
And the longer that the wine stays in contact with oxygen, the more it's going to continue to change because that oxygen is impacting all of the compounds within the wine. Even if at the end of the night or afternoon or morning, you put the cork back in the bottle of wine, there's still oxygen in the bottle that's going to impact how that wine tastes over time. Now there's no more oxygen that's gonna get into the wine except for a very little amount through the pores in the cork, but still, in a few days, that wine is going to taste bad, vinegar bad. Because it doesn't take a whole lot of oxygen to completely develop your wine far beyond enjoyable amounts. And the goal of something like this would be to slow that process down. It's not going to eliminate it completely, but I think they said something like up to a week, it will still be a good bottle of wine. And we're not gonna wait a week, but we'll see how the device works. Stick the cork into the top of it and put our pump over the top of the wine. And I think we're just pulling the oxygen out of the bottle. That didn't seem like a great suction. I think I did something wrong. Stick it in there and pull the oxygen out. Where did I put the instructions? Place firmly and pull 15 times. Ooh, wait, that seems like it's working. I think I got it. I think I heard the oxygen go back in right after we pulled it off though. And then we're supposed to twist this timer to the day marker that we put the bottle in. It's a little difficult to twist because it's rubber. There we go, I'm twisting the wrong part. We twisted it to five days. And it's recommended that we finish it in seven days regardless, but I have a feeling that it's not working very well. There's hardly any suction in there, and if there wasn't any oxygen, that would be a little bit more difficult to pull out. So this device is definitely a no-go, even for five bucks, would not recommend purchasing this thing. There's a bunch of other devices out there that you can use to get the wine out of the bottle without actually breaking the seal of the cork. But if you are regularly not finishing your bottles with wine that you want to drink later, I would recommend going with something like the Coravin, which is an option that's on the market that's gonna be way more reliable and frankly, much easier to use, but also much more expensive. And we've got your basic corkscrew. Not all corkscrews are created equal. My personal favorite is this one right here. This is the best corkscrew I've ever used, ever. But this one right here, I got from the Rafino Winery and I had to go to Italy in order to get it. I mean, I didn't actually go to Italy to get the corkscrew, but I was in Italy when I got it. And this one here was $5.53. We're gonna find out how good a $5 corkscrew is compared to the Italian stallion. <laughs> You've still got all your basics in this thing. You've got whatever that's called. You've got your corkscrew and you've got your foil cutter on the back, so this should work exactly as needed. Gonna grab a Macomb Village's Chardonnay. And the first thing that we've gotta test is, of course, the foil cutter. Let's grab the bottle and cut the foil around the edge of the bottle, and then pull it off, and it appears to work as expected, no challenge there. So foil cutter, great. Now the next thing we gotta test is the corkscrew and the ability to easily pull the cork out of the bottle. The corkscrew doesn't go in as easily right off the bat. I don't know if I'm just not hitting the gym enough or if that's actually the case, but it doesn't seem quite as easy as the one that I usually go to. But the lips on whatever this is called to pull the cork out are actually very well placed. That said, so far for five bucks, this thing seems to work fantastic and you don't have to go to Italy to get it. It's your basic corkscrew. And that brings us to our last item here. We've got the Keeps Chilled Wine at Perfect Drinking Temperature. Unfortunately, I didn't chill the wine, so we're gonna see if it will chill the wine by going inside the wine. I did remember and previously take this out 
and chill the actual device that's inside of it. This thing right here, it's ice cold. And this was $11.88. And this is like a long ice cube that will sit inside of your bottle of wine and at the end actually is an aerator as well. We just take our bottle of wine now because there's a full bottle of wine. I don't know if it's gonna push too much wine out. Let's, yep, pour some wine out before you put it in. Poured some wine out. Stick it in and lock it down. If this bottle was completely chilled, it would supposedly keep the wine cooler longer, which makes sense because that's a frozen piece in there with the chilled wine, which means it would stay a little bit colder. How much colder? I'm not sure. We're gonna see if it makes a difference in a room temperature bottle, if we can see that the wine gets a little bit more chilled. But the real question, is it truly necessary? I think for 12 bucks, you can easily just stick the cork back in the bottle and put it in the fridge while you're waiting to pour the next glass. That's gonna have no difference than if the wine is just sitting in the bottle with the cork in while you're waiting to pour the next glass out in the open air. You'll just keep it a little bit more chilled, which is what this device is trying to do. All right, it's been a few minutes. We're gonna give this a shot, see if the wine is just a little bit more chilled than our uh, room temperature glass here. Let's find out. Aerator seems to be working well and pouring the wine quite nicely. That's a plus. If it was broken, definitely a fail. This one does feel a little slightly chillier. It's a little bit colder, a little bit cooler to be expected when you're fighting up against a bottle of room temperature wine. That being said, I don't know if it's entirely necessary to use a device like this. Like I said, you can just put the wine in the fridge while you're hanging out. I would not recommend grabbing something like this. If there's anything from this video that you do want, whether I recommended it or not, all the links are in the description down below so you guys can check that out. And at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you've got a glass of wine that you enjoy drinking. That's good. That's really, it's really good.